Hello, this is Chris Bennett. Join us weekly at Pot TV on the Burning Shiva Hour as we explore the roots of cannabis culture throughout history and around the globe. On PotTV.net, home of the herd. Seeds and emoryseeds.com on the internet. And with me here are some friends, some lady friends, incredible friends. Blueberry crossed with white rhino. These were uh, white rhino females uh, pollinated with a beautiful blueberry male. And these are the F1 hybrids that came from those seeds that are available at emoryseeds.com for only $35 Canadian for 10 seeds. You know, those are the most inexpensive seeds in our catalog of 400 varieties. And yet they have produced some of the most stunning, incredibly frosty resinous plants that I've ever seen. And currently these are ready to be harvested in about two weeks, and they will produce some of the most frosty resinous buds. And these come from the Irish Rose Seed Company, and they're only $35 again for 10 seeds. I can't help but reiterate that. It's such an incredible deal. And surrounding me are more and more of the same female progeny of those very seeds. They've turned out to be very stable and very consistently beautiful, and I know they're going to produce some incredible pot. So if you want incredible pot, then by all means, go to my catalog in Cannabis Culture Magazine or on the Internet at emoryseeds.com, and uh, you can have some incredible pot like this. Hi, this is Chris Bennett with the Burning Shiva Hour. Today we're honored to have uh, an esteemed guest. We have Dr. Francis Thackeray. Uh, Dr. Thackeray is the uh, uh, proponent of the theory that Shakespeare used cannabis for uh, 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 purposes of uh, imaginative and creativity and uh, um, indicated this in his works. Hello, Dr. Thackeray. Hello, Chris. It's a great pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for the invitation. Now, um, Dr. Thackeray, when did you first uh, um, start researching this stuff about Shakespeare taking the slant that uh, possibly uh, indications like the dark lady and the noted weed in his writings were in fact uh, esoteric references to cannabis? Well, it began about three years ago. I, I happened to be acting in, in a production of Hamlet <laughs> in Pretoria in South Africa. And after that, I, I turned to Shakespeare again. I, I started reading the sonnets in a way that I've never read them before. And coming across reference to the noted weed in Sonnet 76 was just extraordinary, um, especially in the context of um, the, the lines compound strange when the word compound we know can refer to drugs um, it was even used in in Cymbeline by Shakespeare himself to refer to to drugs um, we, we, we we were looking for possibilities uh, that, that these pipes that we analyzed more recently um, may have contained compounds of the kind that we were uh, just wondering about after reading several of his sonnets. I mean, sonnet 38 refers to um, the kinds of things that we uh, might have associated with sources of inspiration because the sonnet here, Shakespeare, mm -hmm. uh, appeals to a tenth muse, a source of inspiration. We know that in classical times there were nine muses or sources of inspiration. When Shakespeare appeals for a tenth muse, and he's also referred in Sonnet 76 to the noted weed, I began to wonder whether or not uh, perhaps cannabis might have been accessible to him. Well, there were many skeptics initially. I, I, I once posted a, a little item on the website uh, associated with MIT, simply with a question, um, hemp and Shakespeare, <laughs> to test the waters, to find out who in the world, who in the globe, might have come up with this idea previously, and I, three years ago, found no one who had really explored this possibility before. Wow! But there was a, there was a lot of criticism following that initial test of the waters. People said, "Well, of course Shakespeare didn't have access to cannabis," but then we realised, of course, Shakespeare had, had. I mean, his first folio was printed on the fibres from cannabis. Um, paper was also used for canvas for the. Uh, the fleet, Queen Elizabeth the first fleet, was using canvas derived from cannabis 
the word, very word canvas is associated with cannabis. Yeah, Latin. I, I think is it uh, goes back to that. I think a Latin Dutch translation or something. Right. Um, so what was rather fun was to test the idea that cannabis might have been smoked in Shakespeare's time by by going through the pipe collections of the kind which are curated at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust in England. And two years ago, I went across to Stratford, made an appointment with Anne Donnelly, the museum's curator, and I was very grateful to uh, be given the opportunity to take samples and with my colleague, Professor Nicholas Bonamova from Harvard University, now also associated with the University of Cape Town, and with a forensic scientist, uh, Inspector Bonamova, here in Pretoria, we were able to do chemical analyses of pipes from the 17th century from England, and we came up with some support <laughs> for the, the kind of ideas that had uh, been stimulated <laughs> by the reading Shakespeare. Interesting, yeah. Well, that, that, that's especially especially after you made these claims and then tested the pipes afterwards that they showed uh, strong evidence of, of cannabis use must have been uh, quite satisfactory to you. Well, it, it was. Um, we, of course, I hasten to say that we, we're not claiming that any of the pipes we analyzed were necessarily those used by William Shakespeare. But, but even no. still, they're from the same area, and you made these claims before any of the pipes were tested. So that uh, 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 does show that cannabis was used in that time period in that general area. Uh, um, and as well, you, as you've pointed out, there's other references like those in Midsummer Night's Dream, which uh, refer to hemp and homespuns. And uh, uh, um, also in uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet, they talk about, a, I don't know if it's mentioned as a compound, but uh, Juli uh, Romeo uh, uh, ta or Juliet takes a, com a, 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 a concoction that mimics death, and uh, um, Romeo mistakes that she's died, you know, so it shows he has an obvious knowledge of, uh, of medicines and uh, uh, um, such things. Yes. I think that Shakespeare was knowledgeable about many of the kinds of medicines that were used in his time. And of course, his son-in-law, uh, Dr. John Hall, lived at New Place, the site of Shakespeare's residence. Um, and we know that Dr. John Hall was getting compounds from, from the New World um, and elsewhere. We... We, we were thrilled, actually, to find nicotine. I mean, some people mm. thought, oh, well, that's no great surprise. But I was pleased that the pipes that have been called tobacco pipes actually did reveal nicotine. Oh, what, ha what had you suspected they were smoking in there? <laughs> the, the general assumption was that, yes, these are tobacco pipes. Well, yeah. we, we knew also that the nicotine would degrade on heating and with age, as other compounds would as well. But we have got evidence for nicotine in these so-called tobacco pipes. But the real surprise was um, cocaine. Yeah. Um, that, <laughs> that was found in two out of 24 pipe fragments. And we're dealing with 17th century clay pipes from England. Now, we had to, 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 to go back to the laboratory. We said, please verify. And indeed, it was confirmed cocaine is present in two of 24 fragments. Immediately, the possibility of contamination came up, but we asked um, the inspectors uh, on a matter to be extremely careful about the manner of, of sampling. And one of the samples which yielded cocaine comes from Harvard House, from the mother of John Harvard, the founder of, of Harvard University. But the cocaine that was was analyzed actually came from the inner bore, the, the, the little hole in the pipe stem, which had been filled with sediment. It hadn't been washed by the museum curators, and we picked up good evidence for cocaine in, in a pipe that hadn't been treated previously by museum curators, and we, pre we felt pretty sure that this wasn't contamination. So there was cocaine in one... Now, when you say stem. cocaine... Do you mean like the chemical product cocaine or cocoa leaf was possibly smoked? We know that, well, the chemical um, that was picked up must have come from the plant erythroxylin, which comes from South America, mm -hmm. from which modern cocaine is, is produced and, uh, and, 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 and distributed worldwide. But would it have been raw material that they would have smoked or uh, um, uh, 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 a... Uh, 
extract think, of some sort. This is something that needs to be investigated. I think the simplest explanation is that the coca leaves may have been introduced to Europe at a surprisingly early date. Um, we know that cocaine was used within the last few centuries. Um, but then, of course, uh, it's perhaps not such a surprise knowing that the Spanish, the conquistadores, were uh, raiding from the Peruvian Indians and the English were interacting with Spanish. So Francis Drake was, was raiding from the Spanish conquist- conquistadores. So it's entirely feasible um, that cocaine was introduced to Europe perhaps initially simply by the introduction of the leaves in Peru itself. Indians, mm-hmm. in Peruvian Indians would, would chew the leaves and, and that had a, a moderate effect. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't be sure how it was actually processed in the 17th century in Europe, but it was a remarkable, it was a surprise to pick it up in two out of 24 pipe fragments in this pilot study. I must emphasize that this is a pilot study. Um, that cannabis was picked up in eight out of the 24 fragments, or at least I should say strongly suggestive evidence of cannabis. We can't say that this constitutes Proof, now, have, now, when you say strongly suggestive and it can't uh, um, serve as proof, what would the critics uh, attack in this particular well, evidence? Yes, I, I, we have to be extremely careful. We, I think the, 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 the forensic scientist agrees with me entirely. We, we can't say categorically, yes, cannabis is there. What we have picked up is low-intensity reading um, using gas chromatography mm-hmm. linked to a mass spectrometer. We've picked up the signal that cannabis is likely to be there in extremely low quantities. And unfortunately, we can't do the statistical test to say that, yes, it definitely is there. Um, but it, we, we're picking it up together with toluene, which is a, a, is a, a byproduct of the combustion of cannabis, not the only byproduct, of course. But we are picking up what seems to be strong suggestive of cannabis from eight of, out of the 24 um, Four of those samples come from new places. You know, that, that is the, the site of the residence of William Shakespeare. Unfortunately, the building was, was demolished about 200 years ago. Mm. But the foundations are still, are still there. Um, they were excavated in the 1920s. And I was pleased to come across a risk to the initial pipe segments that had been found in the course of excavating the foundations in order to lay out a garden. If you go to Stratford now, one will see a, a very attractive garden laid out in, in an Elizabethan style. Um, a few pipe fragments had been found from the foundations in the 1920s. When I went to Stratford uh, two years ago, I was very pleased to learn that a lot more pipe fragments were available for chemical analysis um, from the Stratford area, not just from New Place, mm-hmm. but also from Harvard House. Um, from the, the Shakespeare birthplace uh, garden and, and from elsewhere, from Loxley, for example, outside Stratford. Um, we also had one sample from, from, from Oxford, from Oxfordshire. Uh, that revealed cocaine. But as you said, uh, having, what, having launched this project with the, the hypothesis that, uh, that that cannabis may have been present, uh, we, we were satisfied with the results, but it's only the beginning. Much more needs to be done. Uh, there are more samples available for study, and what we will be doing is attempting to, to have more pipes analyzed, especially pipes which have uh, firm contextual evidence. Hmm. Now, you um, have suggested that uh, Shakespeare, if, if using cannabis as this evidence uh, seems to indicate now, and uh, you're following up and whatnot, um, was using cannabis. It may have been from an influence from witchcraft. Well, gosh, you know, I, I was wondering why was it that Shakespeare wasn't being explicit about the, if he was using cannabis? And one possibility was that in Shakespeare's time, um, anyone associated with witchcraft and drugs could be so easily associated with witchcraft. Perhaps uh, Shakespeare was being extremely circumspect about what he wrote uh, and was deliberately avoiding explicit reference to cannabis if he was using it. 
for the very <laughs> reason that perhaps his books would have been burnt, and worse still, perhaps perhaps his own life was at stake. Yeah, well, there was a papal decree at that time uh, uh, equating cannabis use as a devil's sacrament, and uh, it in itself uh, alone was uh, was you know like worthy of uh, being sent to the flames. So yes, well, Chris, I was delighted to read your email just recently uh, about this. Um, the, the Pope Innocent the Eighth yeah. and his proclamation. Yes, I, I I didn't have that evidence before, and I'm delighted to know that you you've, you've got it there. In yeah, yeah. And, white. <laughs> and uh, had you been familiar with Rabelais at all? I I've come across him, but I I I haven't read him in detail. But there he is, referring to Pantagruel, which is a, a, a reference to cannabis, and one can one can see that. He's being pretty circumspect there, but but writing in in metaphor. Yeah, I think that's what Shakespeare's doing in the sonnet. I yeah. think he's making use of of metaphor to hide the fact or to cover it. And indeed, his sonnets were never intended for public distribution. He was. I, I understand that the sonnets were written just to be distributed among his friends, and among his friends may have been people like Alexander Craig, a contemporary who wrote sonnet. And in one of his sonnets, he refers to pipe of loam, in other words, clay pipe. Mm. And in the context of uh, far-fetched, legume-attractive Indian smoke, mm, well, nice. we know that cannabis is, is known to be an anti-phlegmatic. Um, far-fetched Indian smoke could refer to, to, to cannabis coming from India. It's a little difficult, that particular line, because... Indian could also perhaps refer to the New World. That's right. But um, it's amazing also to, to read that Professor Catherine Duncan Jones of Oxford University interprets this particular sonnet by Alexander Craig as one in which <laughs> uh, the sonnet is, is, is reflecting wild changes in mood, <laughs> wild wow. mood changes. But one thinks that, yes, indeed, substances such as cannabis may well have been used by um, at least a few poets and writers in Shakespeare's time. Yeah. I'm not saying that Shakespeare definitely used it, but uh, one wonders, considering this, this growing uh, mass of evidence. Yeah, well, this, you know, to my mind, uh, um, more so than witchcraft brings to to uh, uh, um, uh, mind the uh, the occult history and uh, 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 things like the Rosicrucian. Uh, 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 Freemasonic type brotherhoods and uh, uh, Shakespeare has been often associated with Francis Bacon who is a major player in such uh, theories as well as Rabelais and yes. uh, um, this may go back to the whole uh, Albigenese heresy and uh, um, secret traditions carried on in, in Europe. Uh, um, Rabelais himself, the chapters on cannabis were of course uh, banned for some centuries after their publication and uh, even modern translations of the book sometimes have them uh, not available in it. You know, they'll make a reference to it and right. say that they just dis discuss hemp, but won't even place them in there. So uh, right. it's a pretty right. interesting history. It is interesting. What's also interesting is the fact that Queen Elizabeth I actually legalized cannabis, but presumably for the sake of getting hemp fiber for the use of her sales um, in order to battle against the Spanish. Um, but any owner, uh, any any person owning more than 60 acres of land were required by law to plant cannabis. <laughs> wow. So, there were so, similar decrees here in the New World as well, uh, both in Canada and the United States. The first uh, laws for concerning hemp were that you had to grow it to you know, pay the taxes in a sense. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And reading the sonnet, it's interesting to see how many references there are to time. Um, but what intrigued me was when reading about the effects of cannabis use, how uh, common it is for people to sense uh, time being prolonged, a sense of eternity almost. And I was wondering just whether Shakespeare was, was hinting at, 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 at that. Of course, one can't look at it in isolation, um, but I believe that another of the side effects of the use of cannabis is, is a... Uh, Appetite. Um, mm -hmm. Appetite. It, cannabis is apparently an appetite stimulant. Yep. Um, and there's Shakespeare referring to gluttony and appetite in his sonnet. There you go. Um, 
I think that one needs now to look a little bit more closely at the sonnet and some of the other writings. Um, the sonnets were written in his early days, in his probably late, his, his, his late 20s or his early 30s. He may well have been experimenting on a certain number of substances, but what intrigues me is that he also hints at the, 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 the effect, perhaps, that, that cannabis may have had. Um, uh, there are some lines which suggests that he's saying, don't use drugs. Um, I, this is just speculation, but I, I, I have expressed it in one paper uh, in the context of Love Papers Lost, where uh, Shakespeare has the line, weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain. And wormwood can refer generally to, to drugs, perhaps. Weed the wormwood means take out. Yeah. And to keep your brain fruitful... Um, may have been take this exploitation in that context. Hmm. The absinthe is made from wormwood, a very powerful uh, narcotic alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm hoping that this study of, of Shakespeare's sonnets might at least stimulate at least stimulate an interest in 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 in, in the writings, especially the sonnets. But I, I think they deserve much more attention uh, than they've been given in the past. They, they've been analyzed in way in various ways there are some people who think that this mysterious dark lady has to be identified with a real person well i have this believe that perhaps uh the dark lady was in fact a, a reference to someone perceived in shakespeare's mind he does of course refer to a journey in my head in 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 one of the sonnets <laughs> um i i think that there's a lot of exciting new research to be done on the sonnets if one keeps an open mind and, and looks at the sonnets in a new way. Yeah, I found with a lot of uh, uh, this literature, it's like uh, people that have had an experience with these substances themselves, I think, have a, 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 um, a way of resonating with other people in history who've written about it, even if they're speaking metaphorically. And uh, my, my wife was, uh, my ex-wife was quite a fan of Shakespeare, and I remember reading the sonnets with her and coming to... Uh, intuitively kind of thinking that, gee, this almost sounds like they're talking about, you know, a drug or something here, but not really having any uh, research to back it up or anything like that. Right. Um, it's right. fascinating that, that, that all this comes up now and that, uh, uh, um, that, that you, you yourself came up with this with intuitively and then were able to back it up with some good solid research to some extent. And right. uh, I really look forward to seeing more on this. I think so much more can be done in analyzing Shakespearean texts. Um, among the critics early on, there were people saying, well, how on earth did, did, did Shakespeare get access to this? We know now that cannabis was, was, was accessible in, in, in England in Shakespeare's time. Um, there are other people who said, well, how can you really be sure that Shakespeare was aware of its effects or its uses? Um, uh, we know, of course, that cannabis was used by assassins, the very word hashish and hashishin are linguistically linked. During the time of the crusade, assassins got high on cannabis as a stimulant before they did their deadly deeds. And there's a, there's a line in Henry VI in which Shakespeare has a character referred to the help of a hempen candle and a hatchet. And there's a link between the instrument of assassination, the hatchet, and, and the hemp and candle. Hmm. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that, that, that Shakespeare was aware of that connection. In Macbeth, there are hallucinations uh, before the, uh, the assassination of King Duncan. Is it a dagger I see before me? Is a famous line referring to the hallucination by Macbeth, who sees, who perceives a dagger, before he carries out the deadly deed. Hmm. I w it would be interesting to know if uh, uh, if it could be shown that Shakespeare was familiar with the works of Rabelais. I would think that he would be, just because uh, Rabelais was so famous, uh, even in his own time, uh, um, that uh, would have, you know, by the time of Shakespeare, he would have been a classic almost, even uh, in the English world. I think you're absolutely right, and I, I, I suspect that, that Shakespeare may well have been familiar with his writings, um, and it, it could be something uh, worth following up. 
Yes, it would, yeah. Um, well, I'm more than familiar with Rabelais. I read his book twice, and it's full of esoteric information concerning the church and history and uh, government and whatnot, as I'm sure there's lots of in Shakespeare's. I've never like read Shakespeare's plays. I've watched a, a few of the movie recent movie uh, takes on it and stuff like that to familiarize myself with it a bit. But uh, I'm looking forward to finding out more about this. I want to thank you for your time. And uh, as uh, this theory develops, uh, we hope to talk to you again in the future. Thank you very much indeed. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. This has been Chris Bennett with the Burning Shiva Hour. See you next week. Hi, I'm Steve Cubby. And I'm Michelle Cubby, and we're going to be doing a new show here on POT TV called The Cubby Files. Tune in to hear about what's going on in the world and what's really happening in the world of cannabis. Be there or stay in your chair.